Hi, this is Ram from Crossmind Studio. Welcome back to the second chapter of Manta Flow series. And today we are going to discuss how to shade your smoke and fire simulations with the help of volumetric shaders inside Blender and Cycles. In previous chapter, we discussed the absolute basics of uh, smoke and fire simulations. And we also talked about the very basic parameters which are available in the gas domain and uh, the flow source for the smoke and fire. And we made a very simple smoke and fire simulation which looks something like this. It's the same file what we created in the previous chapter and this is what we are going to take forward and uh, today we are going to generate one render out of this one and uh, discuss the process of the shading with cycles. So the volumetric shading is uh, slightly different from shading a regular 3D object. In a regular 3D object, you have uh, one texture and you can use that texture based on the UV coordinates and place it wherever you want. But the volume shading of a smoke simulation or a fire simulation is a bit different. Because of the dynamic behavior of the smoke and fire simulation, it has a certain motion and the shader needs to follow that motion and not just to wrap around it like a texture. So just like how we use UV coordinates in a regular 3D object, we have something called attributes for the shading purpose of the smoke and fire simulations. And these attributes are generated along with the simulations what you see in this domain. And these attributes basically separate out and create uh, uh, different fields for smoke and the flames and the density where the heat is generated and what is the color of the smoke and uh, most of them you can uh, see over here in the viewport display for the smoke domain over here in the physics properties if i scroll down i have the viewport display option and if i enable the color mapping you will be able to visualize most of these uh, attributes over here so if i select heat you can see the heat how far the reach of the heat is and if i select the fuel you can see from where the fuel is uh, basically the temperature over here and also the density and few other attributes over here so these are just for the visualization purpose but not for the rendering but you can access these in the shading editor and that is what we are going to discuss in a moment but before we get to that let's talk about what is the actual process of burning and what are these attributes so the process of burning in real life is basically called the combustion reaction okay the combustion reaction is basically very high temperature chemical reaction be between a combustible material which is basically a flammable material in our case that is flow source and between an oxidant which is oxygen in the environment and in our case you can safely assume that that is our domain which creates an environment for our smoke simulation okay and uh, combustion reaction releases heat and that heat triggers fire and fire into smoke. Sometimes this reaction proceeds so slowly that the change in temperature is not so noticeable and in that case you will not see the fire and only will see the smoke but when it happens at a very fast rate you will be able to see the flame and smoke okay and that is why when we are simulating only the smoke you will not have access to the heat parameter or the temperature parameter but when you are simulating the fire, you will be having the access to the fire, flames, temperature and the heat parameter. So these are a few things to keep in mind and all these terms are very common in all the 3D softwares wherever you are using uh, smoke and fire simulations. So it's uh, better to memorize all these and study about these and you will be able to understand the behavior of the simulations much better if you take inspiration from the real life. Now as we are discussing this reaction, so basically think about this we have a fuel source we have a domain which is like a oxidant for this uh, chemical reaction you, uh, i mean this is just my analogy for this and uh, it's not actually oxygen in 3d but i'm just drawing parallel for that and uh, now as we're discussing this real life combustion reaction now come to think of this what are the different steps of the reaction so we have uh, a temperature attribute at some temperature the reaction will trigger and that will generate heat okay so we have heat and this heat will if a reaction proceeds at very high rate then this will trigger fire and these are also called flames
and this will also result in the smoke and smoke you can uh, measure with the density parameter and also we have few other attributes which are velocity and smoke color all of these reaction steps are also available in 3d for you to shade your simulation now to explain this in more detail what i'll do is i'll start creating a material for this and uh, go through it one by one now let's create a new material and uh, that will bring up a principal bsdf by default okay now if i render this one you will be able to see the surface of the material and that is not what we want over here now we can see the surface because right now we are using a surface material over here this is a volume information the smoke and the fire you see is a volume inside this surface so that is why we don't need this and if you're coming from the introduction chapter you will know what the volume shader is because we made a very nice looking clouds for the final chapter and uh, this is the kind of same process so over here i'll bring one principled volume and plug this one in the volume over here and now you will see this is picking up on the density and all this volume information available within the box within the domain system and but there is still a long way to go and there are still a lot of things you will need to tweak to make this more believable this is just a basic shader okay now this volume shader is all in one solution for all your volumetric shading needs and previously we used to have a different volume scatter and then volume absorption and then we used to combine that with emission and combine all these multiple nodes to make a fire and smoke simulation material shader but now in the recent versions we have this much better much more convenient all in one node which is called principal volume and you can access all these properties of the volume within one node and it's much more organized and much easier to access okay so let's go through this one by one now this is the your main shader now along with this shader as we were discussing we would need attributes and as you can see these are some of the attributes which are all already being used by default over here and anywhere you can click and type these are attribute sockets okay temperature attribute density and over here we have color where we can use the color attribute as well we can also bring external node which are attribute nodes and type on attributes over here there is one more node over here which is called volume info and this is also kind of a similar node but basically what this does is this gives you four major attributes which are related to the volume so you can either bring one attribute node and type here manually or you can bring a volume info node and access all these four nodes from here but this is not the complete list over here other than other than this we have one heat attribute and one is the temperature attribute but those two are experimental attributes and uh, those are you can access it but uh, those are like a quite experimental so let's go through these parameters one by one and the first input over here is the color input and as the name suggests this input is for the color information which you will see over here so if i change this color basically this will change the color of the smoke over here and uh, this is this will sound simple but this is not the only use for this okay a much correct way to use this is to access the color information which is actually there in the simulation with the attribute called color and we will get to this part later in a moment but basically what you can do is whatever color information is available on the flow source if i select the flow source over here and go to the physics properties you will see the smoke color over here and you can animate this value and that will create a smoke of multiple colors and this should happen before the simulation and once you have the simulation you can access all those colors in this domain over here and plug that into here and what that will do is instead of creating a flat color 
you can actually access the color information which is there in the simulation so like i said i will explain this with a better example in a moment and uh, second is the color attribute the color attribute is basically based on what you want to color your simulation basically the smoke if i type color over here which is one of the attribute so basically this will pick up the color from the actual flow source over here okay right now our simulation is baked with a gray color that is why we can't see much happening over here but basically this will pick up the color from the simulation and if i type density over here then this will shade my simulation based on the values of the density wherever the density is more my smoke will look much more brighter wherever density is less smoke will look much darker okay now you will see you might think this is a very good solution but it might not be ideal for all the situations so and maybe sometimes if it's a too dense smoke then that might create black patches because of the negative value or the darker value of the density and that you will see if you enable the environment over here if i increase the density more you see these darker colors these are because of the density values so but still you can use this in some cases there is no right or wrong way about this this is all experimental now i can type some other attribute over here as well like a heat or something but like i said the best attribute to use over here and which is uh, by default this is empty but uh, the most useful one over here is the color attribute if you don't have any color information in the simulation you can leave this blank that is safe to assume the third one over here is the density and the density is pretty straightforward if you reduce this one you are uh, on the zero density basically your smoke have no density that's why you won't be able to see anything but the more you increase it the much more dense your smoke will become and uh, if you make it around five or something then you will see much more prominent shape of the simulation but still this doesn't look a very correct representation of what we see in the viewport but we'll get to that in a moment so i'll just make the smoke a slightly uh, colorful just for the fun for now so this is density and the density attribute is basically based on what the density will work if you make it blank then basically this will fill up the entire box with the volume so density should always go over here and yeah okay i'll just make it back to white anistropy is basically will decide how much a light will scatter inside the volume either in the front or in the back okay now to explain this example much more clearly what i'll do is i'll enable the environment in, and over here i'll bring some other hdr where you can see this with a much clear uh, light source in the background so i have this studio hdr over here i'll just disable these hue saturation nodes and gamma node for now so this studio X e uh, exr basically we have a pretty pretty strong light source over here okay now if i go to the object material now i'll increase the density just to explain this example so basically what happens is if you make this anisotropy parameter if you increase it in the positive value the light will scatter and create a rim and this light is scattering in the back side but if you make it a negative value then in that case whatever light source is in the front of the smoke simulation uh, the smoke then that will scatter more in the in the front of the area of the smoke now we have this light source over here and uh, if i make this if i start increasing this number you will be able to see a very clear rim that is forming around let me just increase the density even further and okay for now i'll just use a density attribute but this is just to explain this example so you can see it feels like the light is observed and the scattered from the back side of this the smoke shader and if you decrease this number and make it a negative value then you will be able to see more of the front because the light is scattering from the front and this is a very useful thing if you are when you're shading in a specific situation like you have a you have one smoke simulation or the explosion happening against the sun source or a very strong light source and you want to form some 
nice rim around it so you can control it with the anisotropy over here and if you make it all the way one then you will be able to see a clear visible light source over here okay now think of this like a glossiness parameter the roughness parameter when the surface is fully glossy then you will be able to see the clear reflection of the lights and the things around it but the more you scatter and the more the roughness is increased then that thing blurs out okay similarly if i reduce this parameter then that light source will scatter over here in the back of the smoke and create this nicer rim now let's go back to our original state of the file i'll load sunrise.exr yeah there you go and i'll enable my scene lights so that is an stroppy parameter so i'll make it zero for now now next is absorption color and this we will discuss later so let's talk about emission strength and if i increase this you will see basically this will add emission to our uh, wherever the presence of the the simulation is now this have a lot of use and uh, basically what you can do is instead of using just a flat value of emission these values you can drive with the help of attribute if you plug in some density or flame attribute over here this amp emission will take the shape of it and uh, now let me just explain this with a better example i'll make the density zero now you will see if i make the density zero this basically doesn't have any information for emission to follow okay and uh, now what i'll do is i'll plug in a color over here from the attribute sorry i'll use a factor and over here if i type density now you will be able to see the emission is basically forming based on the density of the simulation and you can uh, increase the strength of it and this is working like a emission shader okay now there is much more you can do with this if you bring some more math node over here you can control it like uh, if i bring one power node over here i can control the appearance of this and make it look like some flames but these are not true flames these are actually density forming around using the emission shader but you can use this as well to add some emission inside your simulations other than the black body intensity which, which is available over here now black body intensity sorry we should uh, use this in emission strength yeah my bad so emission color is uh, basically what color you want this emission shader to look like and a black body intensity is basically your flames if i use any higher value like uh, any any value that will decide the strength of the flames visible over here now let me explain this uh, with a better example let's say if we have the density of one in the simulation and let's decrease the emission strength back to zero so we have the density over here we basically have the smoke and let's increase this now let's talk about how you can control all these attributes and uh, basically instead of a flat value in the density or the emission you can use the attribute and form much nicer visual for that so right now we have a flat value in density now just like how we use a texture in the input we can use the attributes as well now let's see if i use density over here instead of a value flat value any number over here now you will see a much better representation of the actual simulation over here which is visible in the viewport and now i can tweak this in so many ways instead of using just a flat number and this is much more artistic control so if i bring one math node over here and add power to this okay the power node is basically uh, it's it's a much complex mathematical function but basically uh, oversimplifying this if you increase the power this will work exponentially and wherever the the values are higher it will strengthen them more and wherever the values are weaker you will see them getting weaker so over here i'll increase this to 1.5 and make a duplicate of this and change the mod to multiply now over here we have some better form of the smoke so let's decrease the power and make this a slightly darker smoke let's make it 10 0.7 and just work around until you find a better shape for the for the smoke basically it should look like whatever you see in the on the screen in the viewport all right so we have the smoke over here and uh, we have the black body intensity forming the flames now if i make it 20 we have the flames over here and uh, let's add some anisotropy to this one 
all right now this looks uh, interesting and we have basically the smoke and the fire now something feels missing over here and that is basically whenever you see a smoke simulation or the fire simulation in the real life from wherever the heat is generated and that doesn't disappear uh, abruptly as you can see over here we can see the flames forming till over here but it seems like none of that heat is affecting the color over here or reaching uh, some broken flames should be present over here as well now even though this is accurate but you can still exaggerate things in the shading process with the attribute now what i can do is let me just disconnect this socket so you can see what emission is doing over here let me just rebuild this node for your uh, uh, for clarifying this again if i plug this one in emission strength so basically emission strength is using the density wherever the density is much higher you will see much more emission happening wherever is density is weaker you will see basically the uh, transparent values and now let's copy this power parameter over here and uh, let's increase this until you see some subtle flames flame looking thing forming around here and i'll clarify this again these are not actually flames but these are visually these look like flames but this is just a emission shader working on the density okay now let's make a duplicate of multiply node and now what i'll do is add some more strength to this just like how we black body we see over here much more energy we have i can add one gamma node and make it look like this all right now if i enable the smoke you will be able to see some some of that the emission shader working over here so without this we had very dull looking smoke which basically doesn't have any information of the heat now if i plug this into emission strength you will see this looks much better much more realistic and i can control this how much i want this heat to be uh, these flames to be present inside the smoke with these parameters and uh, this is not the only attribute you can use over here instead of density you can also use heat over here and actually i prefer using heat and this looks much more believable now to clarify this one i'll show you a better example what is the difference between heat and density at the first glance if i type density over here these two look pretty much the same i mean you have some flames going on uh, forming like this but if i make a duplicate of everything and plug this over here and change this to heat now let's bring one mix rgb node and plug this over here and now we have one based on the density and one network based on the heat now see what happens if i make this towards the density this is the density working factor of zero and if i increase this there is a very subtle difference basically what is happening is when we shade it using density that works everywhere wherever the smoke is more dense but that doesn't generate from where the heat is triggered but if i make it heat then you will see the more power over here and less power power over here and let me just make the black body intensity to zero now now you will be able to see the difference much more clearly this is based on the density and this is based on the heat okay i hope you can see the difference and clear, to clarify this what i'll do is i'll exaggerate it even further this one is density and this one is heat this is density and this is heat now in the heat there is more power over here this is a much because the heat is generated from our flow source and over here it will have much stronger value and that will fade away as it reaches the top of the simulation but the density because the this is a density attribute this is not from coming from the emissions uh, i mean the heat of or the temperature it this is just uh, the fog which is uh, the smoke which is in the simulation so that is why you will say some uh, quite uh, you will not see some dramatic change over here so this is a very subtle difference and uh, i hope you can notice it yeah and uh, i'll just uh, delete this one and uh, plug the heat over uh, let's uh, just use density for now so in black body intensity basically that works based on the temperature and if i disable the emission as well you will be able to see 
this is forming the flames black body intensity all right and if you want these emission flames to look much more natural like black body intensity over here you can also bring one uh, black body node and plug that into color now you will see these this black body node basically gives you much more accurate colors based on the temperature okay you can see the temperature parameter over here so instead of using an orange or yellow color over here you can insert black body and this will give you so much better visual based on the temperature and the next parameter is the black body tint and this basically is whatever the flames are formed with this black body intensity parameter you can use a nice tint for that and make it look stylized uh, visuals and the next one is the temperature and this will basically uh, you can uh, use any number and based on that temperature number your flame will uh, either uh, brighten up or get weaker this is just not about the brightness of the flames this will also change the color of the flames and based on that temperature okay if i make it a weaker uh, number then you will see other than uh, increasing the brightness of the flame this is a uh, color based on the temperature and if i make it some really strong over here like uh, maybe 2000 then uh, it's much brighter and uh, the color is more yellowish okay then we have a temperature attribute and uh, this is basically what is uh, uh, the attribute used for the black body intensity over here now there is sometimes a confusion that what is the difference between uh, the temperature and the flame attribute so i'll just clarify that with uh, one example over here so let me just plug that into emission because uh, this is a much easier way to uh, uh, visually show you uh, the difference between these so let's use uh, temperature in this one and uh, let's make a duplicate of this and let's use uh, flame in this one okay so basically what is happening over here is if i use the flame attribute this is working on the density of the flame wherever the flame is uh, the density is much more higher you can see the thicker flames wherever the density is less for the flames you can see a very mild uh, very subtle looking hint for that okay and uh, that is the only difference okay and if you in uh, if you use uh, the temperature this is basically the energy which is uh, the temperature that is generated uh, when the simulation happens okay in some cases you can use the temperature and over here this is used for the black body intensity but to form the much nicer flames you can uh, use the flame attribute over here so yeah that's about it for all these parameters so we basically have uh, one uh, density uh, that is going on over here and uh, we, then we can use emission strength to add some artificial flames then we have uh, emission uh, uh, basically the black body color which we used for the emissions uh, color and we have flames which are generated over here with the black body intensity so this is how you can uh, basically share your uh, smoke and fire simulation but this is not a perfect example and this is just to show you how all of these work now let's go to the final file and create one perfect shader for our simulation okay now let's go to the final file over here and uh, this one is on the 256 resolution so over here you can see this simulation is on 256 resolution with the uh, with the upres factor of 2 this is what i used for the final render okay and uh, this file gets much heavier it's okay if you want to try it out on much lighter version like 128 or 180 resolution just like how you see in the previous example that was 180 resolution okay we have one uh, basically material output over here i have a smoke domain material and i'll start building up the final shader for this one so i'll just bring one uh, shader and a principal volume and plug this one over here okay and enable my rendering all right now you see we have basically a nice smoke going on over here so before i start shading this one let me show you my hdr which i'm using because some of you might have concern about that so it's a very basic hdr setup this is sunrise.exr which comes from the very default folder of the blender foundation blender 2.82 data file studio lights world you can also see this hdr from over here this is the sunrise.exr which you also use in the look dev mode okay the only difference is over here i increased the saturation a bit and i also increased the gamma strength and now i'm using this on uh, on the strength of two okay 
so this is a much stronger light source and uh, set up around here okay then i have few lights which i'll show you later now let's tweak this smoke over here okay so i'll bring one attribute and type in density over here and i'll use uh, this factor to adjust the value of the density i'll bring one math node and uh, change this to power and i'll make it around one so i can see a much clear forms of the frames and uh, the smoke wherever the density is forming some curls we can always power this up with another node and add multiply to that and i can ramp this up by around maybe 20 or something all right this looks good now i can add some brightness contrast to this one maybe make it one and i can change the color of the smoke to something cooler or what i can do is i can basically bring one color amp over here and plug that one into this one and this multiply value to the color lamp and uh, give this one slightly cooler color i'm going to tweak this uh, these values around uh, this looks too dense i can make this 1.2 and uh, this around 20 and increase the contrast by around 2 okay and now i have much more clear definition of the actual simulation so this looks better just make sure that you uh, don't add so much density that it will start showing up these voxels okay now i've seen some of you like i made this uh, mistake myself that just to make the smoke look uh, much more thicker you might end up using a lot of density value okay like maybe around um, 150 or something okay now this looks good but this simulation is made of voxels these voxels have the information of the volume now these volumes are inside the voxels and after a certain point when you push the density too much instead of the true information like whatever you see over here okay now technically whatever you see over here this is the smoke which is generated okay but whatever you don't see over here that information is still there in the voxel however minor that information is that is still there okay so maybe it's 0 0.01 smoke which exists over here which you can't see okay but when you increase the den this density too much now this will fill up this will empower those unseen voxels as well and what will happen is it will basically make it a solid voxel and uh, and after that point you will end up making your uh, simulation look like this this will have grid lines and voxel lines everywhere and this is not actually the right so if you really want to make some thick smoke then you should add more smoke to your simulation not in the shader i mean uh, you should add more uh, smoke which is emitted from the volume and maybe add more emitter sources and run the simulation for much more frames and when technically there is more smoke that is when it's going to look much more natural and dense smoke okay now this has limitation so this is not the right way to make your smoke look thick so just keep that in mind and also as i mentioned over here you can leave it blank if you want and adjust your uh, visual of the smoke uh, from over here like how darker or brighter you want this to look like but uh, one of the quick way this is just an experimental trick for some cases this works and especially when the background is darker so if i type density over here my visual looks much more better okay because the true density information is overlaid on top of the color now if i make it 0.9 and 50 and 1 now you will be able to see this this visual looks much more better but like i mentioned previously the problem over here would be in case you start seeing these dark patches then you should ignore this and just adjust it from here okay but uh, let's keep it this way for now now we will work on our uh, black body intensity basically let's add some flames to this okay and that is pretty simple you just need to increase this value but this looks way too purple and uh, i'm going to make it much more subtle something which have slight hint of blue but not too blue all right and maybe i can crank this up a bit more in the black body intensity so now we are going to add some heat over here okay and uh, you know like uh, the process of this we already discussed i'm going to enable the emission strength and uh, use heat attribute over here and i'll also bring up one uh, separate node for the black body color which i want to use for emission color now we have some the presence of the heat over here okay now we are going to tweak that we'll make a duplicate of this power node 
and make it around uh, 2.5 okay now let me just disable this density for now now i'll add one more multiply node and make it around uh, 12.5 or something and i can also add one uh, gamma node just to make it look much more uh, powerful something like this okay now let's enable our density again there you go so now we have presence of a slight hint of flames and the color of the flames going on over here okay and you can adjust that if you want this to look much more dramatic you can add more value to this in uh, decrease this number so that is totally up to your taste okay the next one is the anisotropy and i'm going to use a very subtle number for this one 0.5 okay what will happen is whenever i have a strong light source in the back of the in the back of the smoke i will see some light scattering inside the smoke this will react much better to the light sources so that's about it this is the final shader which i've used for the render which you have seen in the trailer and uh, it's uh, simpler but it definitely took me much more time than this to figure this out to find the perfect field so what i do is whenever i have one network so let's say if i make a duplicate of this one and uh, so when I have one network, then uh, let, for the density and all, I usually make one duplicate of that. Then I start experimenting that. Like uh, maybe you can mute few nodes and see what combination works better. And you can also play around with the different mods which are available in the math node. And also you can uh, try out a few different colors. Let's say if I wanted to make uh, some really toxic looking thing and also I can uh, enable emission color. And I can also add one uh, hue saturation over here as well. Sorry about that. Uh, this goes into emission strength. And this goes into emission color. And over here I can add uh, some hue saturation. So this way you can completely change the look of your simulation. And make it however you want this. Okay. So these are just uh, very basic examples. And uh, this one is the final shader which I have used so yeah that's about it and uh, i uh, rendered this one on around 180 resolution and, uh, the one frame took me around uh, seven to eight minutes now when you have this simulation and it's always uh, there is so much work that goes into this so if you are doing this for your personal project it's always fun to also render this out from different views and uh, do, with a uh, play around with the different lights uh, you can uh, take few close-up shots so as you've seen uh, some of the close-up shots happening in in the trailer so I used the same simulation and basically generated some close-ups, okay? Just enjoy your uh, uh, first simulation and shade it, play around with this. And here is the final render which I've used uh, in the trailer. So these are, this is the final render and uh, these are some of the close-ups. Now I wanted to explain a few more things before we conclude this chapter and uh, that is about how you can use the color attribute and uh, how you can uh, also use the factors of the density to combine two colors okay so for that i will uh, bring up a different file now here's the another simulation which i've created just for the purpose of explaining how you can use a color attribute so over here if i select the flow sources what is happening is uh, i have multiple keys set up of the smoke color just like how you set key for any modifier parameters you can simply press i on this one and change the color so it's a very simple process and i'm sure you're familiar with this one so as i scroll in the timeline you will be able to see multiple color introduced at the different frames those colors basically mix up over here and uh, produce vivid looking simulation so this is not what you can do with the color ramps in the shading okay like in the color ramps you have a color which is basically working like a overlay okay that doesn't follow the physics of the simulation but over here you can see as the new color is introduced that emits from here and that also fades away and mixes up with the other colors so this is what we are going to use for the render purpose so here's the render setup for this one so what is happening over here is if i enable the render without these two inputs uh, i'll disable the color input and i'll disable this attribute okay without this what will happen is it will just pick up a flat color over here over here i have one attribute which is uh, basically plugged inside the color over here and what happens is this color attribute will pick up color data from the simulation 
and apply this over here okay and then i added hue saturation to uh, add some more vibrance to that now one thing to keep in mind is you need to set keys for the colors in the simulation before you bake it because the change of the color will be calculated in the simulation so you can't change that later and expect that to work over here so you need to keep that in mind so always set the colors or the color keys before you bake the simulation and uh, then also i can um, call the color attribute over here as well now you will see smoke is uh, using the color attribute this looks much more interesting okay i will show you the final render what it looks like so here's the final render what you see and this is how you can use uh, the color attribute okay and now here's another example i wanted to discuss with you the last one and uh, this is basically about how you can uh, use attributes as a factor just like how you use textures to combine multiple colors okay over here uh, i have a different uh, node i'll just explain this very quickly so let's say if i bring one attribute over here and call this density okay and plug this one into the emission strength now let's bring one uh, black body and plug that one into emission color let's bring one uh, math node and make it to power something like this all right and you can also multiply this one so i have this black body color affecting the emission okay now i'll make another version of this one and i'll tweak this color with the hue saturation and make it a uh, something like a cool color okay now what if i want to add uh, these two colors together i mean uh, combine these two colors together but not with just some texture but with the attribute okay now that is the interesting thing uh, about the attributes now i can combine these two colors but th that will still follow the simulations uh, animation now if i go over here and bring one mix rgb so in lower input i'll add the blue color and in the upper i'll add the warm color now i'll make a duplicate of density and plug that into factor now you will see wherever the density is much higher i can see the first input uh, sorry the second input and wherever the density is much lower i can see the first input and this is a much much more interesting example how you can uh, use these as a factors and after that you can uh, if you want to control it further you can always bring one another node which is uh, yeah it should be over here so wherever the values are less than these and this number i will see the first color wherever the values are more than this number i will see the second color so this is what i've used uh, in this over here but there is a slightly more detailed work into this I mean uh, it's not so detailed but so in the factor just I explained uh, I have one density and I have this value less than and more than controlling the density which is going into the factor okay so I have one uh, density factor affecting these two colors I mean uh, combining these two colors and then I have one gradient this is a linear gradient which is going basically from um, bottom to top now I combined these two with another mix node and uh, then I played around with the different settings of uh, the mods and I found this one better. So that is what I'm using over here. Okay. So I hope this gives you some idea how you can uh, combine with the attributes and uh, this works just like uh, how you combine two nodes with the texture inputs. Okay. So yeah, that's about it for today and uh, this was a lot and but I would suggest you guys to just play around with with these values and not just uh, put the numbers which i have used in the tutorial so that will not be fun i mean uh, you should uh, make a totally new look based on the your observations and play around with these values nothing can go wrong with a computer simulation okay so just try out different looks for your simulation play around with the colors density values however you want and uh, don't hesitate to play around with this okay so i hope to see what you guys make with this uh, with this simulation and uh, the shading chapter and uh, i would love to see the results and your simulations do tag me on instagram with instacross mind and share your results i would love to see what you guys create with this one okay so our next chapter is going to be about how you can practically add smoke or fire simulation to a 3d object and within a 3d scene and uh, do a production ready render okay instead of uh, making some raw attempt in a blank file we will actually make a smoke or fire simulation however basic it's going to be but it will be within a 3d scene okay 
so i will see you in the next chapter and hope this was useful and you guys learned something do let me know in the comment section and uh, also uh, if you guys come up with a better solution or uh, some exciting new tricks don't forget to share it with me so i will see you guys around in the next chapter good luck have a great day goodbye